I'm a teacher and a psychologist. Uh, I teach in the uh, International Baccalaureate, so uh, a little bit uh, different curriculum to the the, um, uh, the national one that we have in Poland. Uh, and I would what I would like to share it with you today um, is some practical tips of how to plan a lesson that will be both active and will uh, involve um, a flexible learning space. And um, I will be um, a little bit more uh, bold to say that uh, active methods are more important than spaces and spaces follow the methods. Um, and uh, this is what I would like to show you. And I hope you can um, see my shin uh, now. Yes. Um, OK, so thank you. Thank you, Elena. Uh, what I will focus on first is uh, the three um, terms, three concepts that uh, we have um, worked on uh, during the Navigado project. Uh, so we have active learning, then innovative teaching, which is linked to active learning, uh, and then a flexible um, learning spaces. And when it comes to active learning, uh, we understand it uh, in a, a constructivist approach as creating meaning, as building new knowledge based on some previous knowledge, pre-existing concepts. Um, and uh, active learning uh, is related, is connected to uh, active pedagogy framework, and it must be student-centered. So we are not um, the only uh, bearer of knowledge as teachers, but we are uh, allowing students to construct their own knowledge and do it actively in the classroom. Uh, and when we talk about innovative teaching, it is uh, basically applying uh, the active pedagogy in action. So it is being able to design and implement activities which will motivate students, which will um, encourage them to discover knowledge, which will uh, scaffold the skills and um, knowledge that uh, um, they will need for for the future and enable them to transfer this knowledge into into new situations. So an active teacher will be uh, asking the question, how can I get my students to discover this rather than how I can explain it? Uh, to my students. And when it comes to uh, flexible uh, learning spaces, uh, I think um, uh, as far as I heard uh, quite a lot of uh, um, previous um, speakers were talking about flexible learning spaces. And of course, uh, this is a, the term that considers both the furniture, the choice of furniture that will be um, that will be easily easy to move um, and we will be able to um, deconstruct our class classroom in a sense. Uh, but also flexible learning spaces um, requires giving students choice and ownership um, of knowledge of what they are learning and how they are learning and uh, how they want to organize their learning. So this is also a part of that, that flexible learning space. And it doesn't always require changing your classroom completely. Um, and um, I firmly believe that you can actually do it with the old furniture if you have such furniture in your classrooms, uh, just with a little bit of creativity. Um, and planning an active lesson, uh, we might think that coming from the traditional uh, traditional pedagogy and traditional way of thinking about learning, uh, there might be several things that we as teachers uh, might um, find difficult. And uh, the first thing that is usually blocking the teachers from moving from traditional cl classroom to an active classroom is either the teacher's mindset or the student's mindset. Uh, teachers very often, I think, get discouraged by students saying, no, just just explain it to me, just, you know, give it to me and uh, I will uh, then try to understand it. And um, of course, in some situations it is necessary. However, uh, active learning is much more um, useful for the students and it's much better. Uh, for acquiring knowledge, for building that understanding. 
and um, sometimes we need to sort of um, to speak metaphorically fight with our students to uh, to show them that this is actually much better for them and for their future. And of course, there are also some other obstacles like overcrowded classrooms, uh, which possibly uh, many of you um, might uh, have. And it might be difficult to uh, to move the furniture and to do some active activities in the classroom. But there is a solution to that uh, as well. We can uh, sort of extend our classroom beyond into the corridor, into the courtyard, somewhere outside. If you're able to do that and uh, the school police is loud for that, that might be um, also um, a way to um, to deal with that. Uh, of course, equipment and furniture, outdated curricula might be an obstacle, focusing on memorizing things rather than understanding insufficient time. Or if you are teaching in high school, like I do, exam pressure uh, and um, a lot of um, things to uh, to teach the students uh, rather than uh, trying to engage them in understanding things. So. Even though these ob obstacles exist, uh, as you already heard from many different presentations before, um, there is a need for um, transitioning into the active pedagogy, for tr transitioning into this innovative teaching uh, that will activate students. So how to do that? Uh, I would say start with why. I don't know if you know Simon Sinek, who is um, the author of, of this uh, concept, this idea. And uh, starting with why means uh, starting with defining the aims and objectives of the lesson, of the unit, because it's usually a sequence of, uh, of lessons. Um, it might also mean um, setting up some key understandings or essential questions or concepts. Uh, and starting from the back. And uh, this is what um, Maktai and Wiggins call uh, the backward design or backward planning. So we start with the aim in mind, with why. What, why do you want your students to, to learn this? What is the purpose? What is the main understanding that you want them to, to get? And only after then we are moving to the process and to the activity. So um, what I mean by the process is the assessment or um, the um, the understanding. How will I know that the students actually acquired the knowledge that uh, that I planned them? How how will I know that they achieved the aims? And then at the very end, how do I do that? What activities do I plan so that uh, these skills and knowledge are uh, really um, at the center of uh, of the student learning. So uh, we are starting with the aims and um, a small example. Um, I'm not a geography teacher, but I thought that this will be quite um, quite nice. Um, I might start uh, the unit on sustainability with um, an essential understanding that is the natural environment is a system which is modified by human management and intervention. Then I might have some questions that I would like the students to answer and they might be um, from different levels. So they might be factual, they might be conceptual, uh, but they might also be debatable, especially if I want to develop communication skills as well. Uh, I would like to also focus in this set of lessons on skills like critical thinking, communication and research. Let's assume that. Uh, so this was my my why. Now I'm moving to to how to the process and I decide that I will be using some formative assessment like a debate or worksheets or quizzes uh, and then uh, as a summative assessment, I will ask the students to write a one page report on sustainable development strategies in a chosen part of the world. So they will need to investigate a certain country or a region um, and uh, find out what are the strategies that this region is using. Uh, and based on that, I can uh, plan some learning experiences, so specific tasks. So um, 
knowing that final result will be a lab report, knowing that I want to focus on certain skills, I can then say that I would like to engage students in uh, preparation and recognizing of different perspectives, and I can match some activities with that. I would like them to learn how to argue. So again, I will have some activities related to argumentation, then effective research skills. So we'll do some activities um, during the lesson that will uh, involve um, research uh, skills, uh, researching smaller topics. And then I would like to introduce them to a lab report format because this will be their uh, summative assessment. And knowing all that, I am able to plan a set of, uh, a set of um, lessons that will be active, where um, my role will be uh, not as a leader of teaching, but rather as a mentor. Um, and only followed by that, I can choose classroom setups. And uh, here I'm referring to the Thornburg uh, metaphorical learning spaces where we have um, a couple of different setups. Um, the first one is campfire. This is uh, for story storytelling. This is from learning from the expert like um, active lecturing style. And I will go into methods methods in a second. There can be a watering hole, so a space for interaction, learning from peers, group work. Uh, there can be a cave, so learning um, individually. Or there is a fourth uh, space format, uh, which uh, Thurnberg calls life, which is testing um, the application of knowledge in real life. And um, based on uh, the activities that I want to plan, I can match it with different space formats. So only when I choose the activities, then I rethink how to set up my classroom and it might change during one lesson. So I might have some activities that will be group work, but then uh, to be very effective, uh, I will have some individual work as well planned into uh, the lesson. Um, what I would like to mention still, uh, and I know I'm running out of time, um, is the um, 5E model by uh, Roger Bybee. And this is also a way to plan a lesson. So this is like a sequence of different parts of the lesson. We start with engaging students. We we'll start with something that will catch their attention, which will allow them to, uh, to connect the topic to some previous experiences, previous knowledge. Then we um, explore, so we allow the students to explore on their own uh, the topic to uh, to engage in some activities that um, will be um, a base for the explanation later on. Then more of a teacher uh, led uh, experience, which is explain. It might be providing students with materials where they can learn from the experts um, how um, a certain phenomenon works or it might be more of an explanation from the teacher than elaboration which is basically practicing um, and applying uh, skills in different settings and then evaluation uh, which I think it is self-explanatory and uh, we can use different activities for different uh, parts of the lesson. So, for example, and I will go very quickly through the, ma the methods. You can find uh, these methods described in um, our uh, guides, Navigado guides, uh, and also some of the articles on Navigado blog. So I will redirect you there. So, for example, to engage, we might create a concept map. So a visual rep representation of some ideas that connect to the topic. Or uh, we might uh, ask the students to uh, to use um, a thinking routine, which is called I know, I want to know, I learned. This is a routine that you can um, sort of uh, break into two, two parts. So first they start with I know and I want to know. Uh, they explore the topic on their own. Um, and then as an evaluation at the end of, uh, of the uh, unit, uh, you ask them what they have learned. This is something that you can post on the wall uh, and it will serve as a reminder of where we started. And of course, to each of these activities, you can see in the right corner, uh, there are different space formats. Um, 
for explore, uh, there are multiple methods you can use. For example, web quests. Um, this is a method that is based on searching the information um, in the Internet uh, to answer specific questions that are set by the teacher. You can use surveys or interviews when, when they can uh, learn from the experts by asking uh, other people uh, about the topic and um, on also um, developing their research skills. We can use case studies, we can use games like a scavenger hunt or uh, escape rooms. Um, we can use debates as well uh, where they learn from uh, each other and um, they uh, discuss certain topics and it might be also based on, on their previous experiences. Um, or they can uh, use um, a jigsaw method where you can tear up the book or give them separate parts of, dif of different articles um, and they need to uh, understand uh, the topic um, by discussing with themselves. Uh, for the explain part, we can use interactive lectures where students um, are not only uh, listening to, uh, to the teacher, but also answering questions or making notes or um, having some think per share moments or pause uh, moments. Pause procedure is another one uh, where you pause and ask the students to make notes or um, ask questions that um, will clarify some of the things. Um, for elaboration, we can use activities that um, apply the skills and knowledge into an unknown setting. So, for example, after learning a persuasive language technique, students can create their own speeches on the topic. Or after learning how the DNA structure was discovered, they use the example to uh, create an infographic which illustrates um, different stages of scientific method. Uh, that was used to discover the DNA structure and so on and so on. And then uh, finally, um, the uh, evaluate, which is very important, both as a feedback and feed forward. So uh, feedback to the teacher where uh, we can use multiple methods like uh, exit tickets um, where students um, write a small piece of paper and uh, put it for you to uh, to know what they have learned, what was the most important idea that they remember from the lesson. We might use more, more elaborate um, reflection sheets or self um, assessment, like, uh, for example, a technique uh, which I really like, which is uh, stop, start, continue, uh, where the students identify their um, strengths and weaknesses and um, um, it allows them to develop their uh, their skills or which is quite important. We can use uh, the rubrics, uh, both for summative and formative assessment, which is a set of criteria against which we are um, we are uh, assessing uh, the work. Uh, and uh, this is the last part. Um, when we focus on the skills, it is also very important to understand on which level we are actually asking the students to um, uh, to engage uh, in the development of skills. And um, tw 21, 21st century um, learning design from framework is um, allowing uh, the students to um, allowing the teacher to plan the lesson so that they don't only develop the basic like group work or uh, real life problem solving, but also go a little bit deeper, deeper into um, development of the skills. And I, um, I will post a link to a very good um, uh, online course uh, that you can take if you are interested in, in it. Um, and I really, really recommend it for all the teachers who would like to uh, boost up their uh, skill focus. Oh, very quickly, I hope that this presentation will be available and um, I would like to uh, um, invite you once again to visit the Navigado uh, website where there is a blog uh, with uh, most of the methods described um, and um, all our guides when we are trying to uh, to inspire you to be more active in your classrooms. Thank you.